on the screen. Uh, in this video, what we're talking about is stiffness factor modifications uh, as they apply to moment distribution. So basically what we're saying is we can apply modified stiffness factors, K, uh, under certain geometric and loading scenarios in order to accelerate our moment distribution uh, convergence. So we have three um, stiffness factor modifications that we could employ depending on our system's geometry and loading pattern. So the first one that we have here is the pinned or roller end modification, okay? So um, basically this is analogous to what we have experienced with slope deflection with the pinned in uh, simplification. It's very similar um, to that. So basically what it says is if the far end of a span is a pin or roller, then we would use a stiffness of 3EI over L, which I'm calling K mod, uh, for that particular span. All right. So let's look at an illustration of what this may look like. So um, this is just one option of where we could run into uh, this application. So let's say we have a fixed end at A and then we have a roller at B and another roller at C. And maybe we got a, a point load P1 on the span AB and a point load maybe P2 on the span BC, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put some dimension lines on this. And uh, let's say that uh, P1 is at L over two, L1 over two, and then also L1 over two, and then let's say P2 is L2 over two and L2 over two. So both of these point loads are symmetrically placed. Um, let's say that EI happens to be constant for the entire uh, system here. So uh, the thing to notice is um, the, the end span BC has a roller at its extreme end, C, okay? So if we're looking at span AB first, span AB, notice you have a fixed connection at span AB. So that would, when you're calculating the stiffness of span AB, that's just the regular 4EI over L, no question there, okay? 4EI over, over, L, over L1 specifically, um, if we use our proper labeling. Um, so that's no different. Now, where the stiffness factor modification would come into play is actually for span BC. For span BC, what we would have is the 3EI over L1, uh, sorry, L2, L2. So uh, that's where that's gonna come into play. Now, here's the next uh, piece of each one of these, okay? On span AB, what fixed end moment calculation would we be using for loading in span AB? That's my question. Well, in span AB, you would end up using the same fixed end moment calculations that we have been using this entire time, okay? So uh, that would be for this particular, for this particular illustration, the FEM, FEMs would come from the left column of that handout. Uh, and that would be like, for example, FEM AB would be the uh, negative PL over eight, and then FEM B PL1 over eight. FEM BA would be positive PL1 over eight, okay? So uh, no change there. Now span BC, that's where things are a little different. Here we would use the FEMs in the right column from our handout. So we would have uh, FEM, FEM BC. If you look at the right column of that handout, that's three PL2 over 16, uh, P2L2, I guess, if we're labeling things correctly. So we should have P1 in the first span. Um, and then that's negative because it's going, it would end up going uh, uh, counterclockwise. So what about FEMCB? 
F E M C B would just be zero because we're, we're using the right column there. Now, another interesting uh, thing to note for this modification is we use a carry over factor of zero when using the pinned end modification. Okay, now in all other uh, applications, you use a carryover factor of 0.5. That's what we've been using. We keep using it for all the other situations, but for the pinned in modification where you have an end span that's a pinned in and you're using the 3EI over L term, that's where you use a carryover factor of zero. So just to summarize, when you have an end span that its extreme end support is a roller or pin, you may use a modified stiffness of 3EI over L instead of 4EI over L. Then if you're gonna do that, you're gonna use the right column of the fixed end moment uh, handout and you use a carryover factor of zero during your moment distribution iterations, okay? Now, remember the pinned in modification, it's an option. It will accelerate convergence. So it's a good option. You should want to use it, but you could do it the old fashioned way that we've been doing and use 4EI over L and you'll still get the same answer pretty much. It'll just take longer to converge. Okay, so let's keep moving and let's talk about the second type of modification, okay? Our second type of modification that we may end up encountering is a symmetry modification, okay? So I'm gonna call this symmetry modification. So the symmetry modification uh, can be applied uh, if the beam is symmetric with respect to loading and geometry, okay? So applicable, we're going to say applicable when beam loading and geometry are symmetrical. All right, so uh, in this case, in this case, we would say K mod, I'm just calling it mod for modified, is 2EI over L. And guess what? Here's what's really cool. Only half of the beam or the system would need to be analyzed, okay? So only half of the system needs to be analyzed. All right, so check this out. Here, here's a great example of, uh, of, of an illustration of where we could use this. Let's say that we have a system just like this. And let's say, again, we got a P1 and a P2. and everything is uh, evenly spaced. Okay, let's call this L, L over four, L over four, L over four, L over four. Oh, and uh, actually no, not P1 and P2, I'm sorry. Just P and P. Remember, it's gotta be symmetric. All right, so notice everything is symmetrically loaded. The geometry is symmetric. So what we would do is if we have these spans A, B, and B, C, we apply K equals, K, A, B equals 2 E, I over L to one span and only analyze the one span since the other will be the same, okay? So that's a very simple illustration of how you can, you can do that, all right? Uh, and then the third carryover factor is 0.5, by the way, still 0.5. It's only zero for the pinned in modification. 
The third uh, modification that we could end up encountering is called the anti-symmetric loading modification. Anti-symmetric loading modification. Now, that sounds a little weird, the word anti-symmetric, okay? Now, anti-symmetric does not mean the same thing as unsymmetric. Anti-symmetric is also sometimes called reverse symmetric. So here's an example of an anti-symmetric loading scenario. And again, this is just one example. You could, you could end up having, um, doesn't necessarily have to be, have to be like this. Put that back, here we go. So let's say we have this three span beam and we'll call this span L1, L1, and maybe call this middle span L2. We got A, B, C, D, okay? And let's say that we have a distributed load here, call it W. And let's say we have another distributed load here with the same W. Now check this out. In span AB, notice that W is pointing down. And in span CD, notice W is pointing up. Okay, that's what we call anti-symmetry, okay, or reverse symmetry. So in this case, in this case, we would use K equals 6EI over L for span A, B. And then again, um, we, can, we can analyze this in such a way where one side of it becomes the same, but everything in the opposite direction as the other side. All right. So um, what's also interesting about these modifications is multiple modifications may be applied to a system. So what's cool about it is if you have a beam or a, eventually we'll get to frames, um, that you have more than one of these modifications that you could apply, that's fine. You can apply more than one of them. So an illustration, an illustration of this would be uh, like the following. Let's say we have pin, roller, 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 and let's say that we've got W and W. And let's say we got L1, L1, and L2. And we got A, B, C, D. Okay, and then again, e, EI is constant. You gotta be careful. E, EI's also gotta be the same. If EI's not constant, then, uh, then that throws your symmetry out the window. So maybe we should make a note of that up here. Uh, EI would also be anti symmetrical or constant and in this case uh, in the symmetry situation EI should also be constant so let's scroll back down and look at this illustration where we could apply multiple um, stiffness modifications notice that um, we have two pinned ends we have the end span at uh, support A is, is a pin, and then at D, it's also a pin. So you got the pinned end simplification. Pinned end simp, or maybe not simplification, modification is the better way, better thing to call it. Mod is applicable. And what's also applicable, the symmetry the symmetry mod is applicable. So here's what's cool about this, uh, about this particular illustration. We can use the pinned in simplification in span AB 
And then we only need to analyze half of this system due to symmetry. So that would really accelerate convergence. So 